All right, welcome uh, to the ongoing adventures of Three Whiskey Bravo. Uh, we are in a cold, dark airplane uh, in um, Liberia, Costa Rica. We landed here yesterday in a very exciting uh, flight from Belize. From Belize. Uh, the weather was not great yesterday, and it remains not great. Uh, but I'm going to do a full flight today. Uh, we are going to go from where we are now in uh, Liberia, Costa Rica, down to San Juan, uh, because uh, I, uh, well, for several reasons, but uh, I want to uh, fly down there. It's a very quick flight, very quick flight, just about 90, 96 miles, 97 miles. And uh, once we get down there, if the weather clears, I want to do a little, uh, little I'm going to rent a, a Cessna and do a little tour of uh, some of the scenery around this area. So um, the uh, airport we're going to is uh, Juan Santa Maria International. Uh, and I said we were going to San Juan. I'm sorry, not Puerto Rico. We're going to San Jose, Costa Rica. Sorry about that. Anyway, we're obviously sitting in an airplane that's off. So. I've already uh, uh, plotted our uh, flight plan, our approach to runway 25, according to the weather. Uh, that's what we should be landing at. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean that's where we should actually land if uh, the weather's real. But uh, the real weather would require a landing on runway 25, Arnav runway 25 in, uh, in San Jose. Anyway, let's get this baby fired up. I am never going to touch the V key, not once, no matter how useful it would be for me to do so. All right, um, because I know it'll crash to desktop if I do. Crash bar up. Generator. Set. Battery. On. EP. From Doppler November Tree Four Tree Whiskey Bravo IFR to Coco ready to copy. Manual. Get our lights going. Some of our lights. Take off runway 25, climb and maintain 7,000 feet. Departure frequency is ON824 decimal tree squawk 4274. 7,000 feet. Well, what Docker November tree 4 tree whiskey Bravo flared to Coco Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Take off runway 25, climb and maintain 7,000 feet. So we'll enter 7,000 feet. I always do more because I know they're going to clear me to my... Cruising altitude is only 8,000 feet, so... This is such a short flight that our cruising altitude is only 8,000 feet, so it's... Uh, with this weather, that could end up being Mr. Toad's wild ride. But we'll pre-activate our VS vertical speed. 2,000, or excuse me, 1,800 feet per minute. That's what FPM stands for. Put our bank angle limitation on right now. The odd damper will activate once we activate the autopilot. Switch our nav source over to FMS. Good. And we'll activate nav as well, meaning that when we click the AP button, all this will activate, which is what we want. I'd like pushback. Ground services request pushback. Ground Docker November Tree Four Tree Whiskey Bravo requesting pushback. Fix our altimeter November is uh, tree, tree, two nine or eight or nine or. There he is, or she. The outside air temperature is twenty five degrees, so we're still in the tropics and dealing with tropical weather. Let's turn off our parking brake so that we can actually be pushed. The way the sim works is it seems that pushback only happens when the uh, prop is spinning if you don't do it yourself, which to me seems, I mean, call me crazy, but I wouldn't want to be that close to a spinning prop. Oh no, they're going to back me into another airplane. Ah, oh, stop! <laughs> That's funny. Whew, thank goodness uh, the collision modeling isn't accurate. That could have been awkward. Wow, we got ourselves some weather today. All right, let's fire this baby up. That's funny. 
Oh, actually, before we do, let's re-engage our parking brake. Aural warning, okay. All right. Um, uh, we'll go to uh, turn on engine starter. We'll watch our NG percentage here. Once it gets to 13, we will go up to low idle. Now we'll monitor it. Once it gets to the green zone there, about 52, go to high idle. Pressurize the airplane. Get our pitot heat on, inertial separator on. Look at our. Got us taken off on runway 25, which is actually the opposite direction we landed yesterday. Switch this over to MFD and zoom in. So, like this, out that way. Let's uh, activate our wind control here. Not wind control, but wind display on the PFD. Go to PFD settings. Uh, other PFD settings. Wind. I like option two. It's the most visible. Looks like the winds are just, to the extent there are any, barely out of the out of the west. So that explains our takeoff direction. Acknowledge the master caution with regard to the inertial separator. And uh, let's roll. It's a pretty short taxi. That's good. Got my feet on the pedals. Let's deactivate the parking brake. Activate our taxi lights. All right. Goodbye, Liberia. I have uh, didn't get to see any of this yesterday. The approach was so cloudy. I don't think, I, as I said, I didn't see the ground until I was at 800 feet. Oof. Anyway, this will be interesting. I've checked uh, all the train maps and... Uh, approach map and all this stuff for apply, uh, flying into San Jose. Uh, and uh, the, the, there's a very mountainous region off to the right, to the, right, to the east and south of this approach, but uh, it looks like the approach from the northwest, where we're coming from, is pretty straightforward. But who knows? Famous last words, right? Anyway, I rarely do full flights because I can't imagine that... Well, I know no one's going to watch this anyway, but I can't imagine most people being willing to sit through that. But I am willing to, and the, I, as I've said before, my main reason for making these videos, since I know no one will ever see them, is for my own benefit. I go and re-watch them later and see where I can improve, you know? Because I know I make 50,000 mistakes. Still getting used to these pedals. I've been using them now for a week, and I'm still getting used to them. Okay, you can see on the MFD here, we're taxiing over to the runway. And really, what seems just fa really fantastic weather. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I didn't see these buildings on my approach yesterday. I was so focused. All right. Moving my feet left, and right, left, and right. Okay. All right. Four flight tells us we're approaching runway two five, so we'll obviously. Liberia Tower down for November there we go. Whiskey Bravo, ready to go runway two five by FR to Coco. Coco. Hmm. Down for November three four three Whiskey Bravo, cleared for takeoff runway two five. All right, clear for takeoff runway two five. Day three Whiskey Bravo. Takeoff runway two five. Down for November three four three Whiskey Bravo. Make sure nobody's coming. 
Don't see anybody coming, but that doesn't mean no one is. Zoom out now. Yeah, I don't see any airplanes. Now, yesterday we landed in this direction. Now we're taking off in that direction. This is our route, which we'll activate here. You can actually see if I go zoom out enough. There we are, see? Head this way, then turn around and do a short approach. And as I said, the mountainous area is to the east, southeast, and south, which I looks like we're mainly going to be dodging. I wish I could tell you that this is going to be a beautiful scenic flight, but it seems clear that it will not be. I'd like to be able to activate weather. That's been another issue area with bugs, so I'm not going to. Let me just reset my camera real quick. Reset. There we go. And we will activate our pulse light now and landing light as we taxi out onto the runway. And we will also deploy takeoff flaps. You see right there? Flaps. T-O for takeoff. I'll use my controller button to move those to takeoff position. Uh, even though the weather's crappy, at least I can say there's not much in the way of wind. I'll take rain over wind any day of the week in terms of takeoff or land in terms of takeoff or landing conditions. Eight thousand nine hundred foot long runway too, so that's that's good. So we're gonna taxi out onto the runway here. Still using these pedals. Got busy feet. Really spectacular weather. What am I doing? I should just go back to the Four Seasons. All right. Good. Okay, we are good to go. So just do one final instrument scan. Make sure we're good. Zoom this actually back out. So again, just by way of brief summary, we've got our altitude preset to 8,000, our vertical speed, Climb rate at 1,800 feet per minute. Yaw damper is activated, but not active. Uh, it's armed, but not active. And uh, it's obviously going to be a very fast uh, climb out up to only 8,000 feet. Uh, that's not hot. I mean, this airplane can get there in <laughs> two or three minutes. So maybe not literally, but close to that. We've got our bank limitation indicator on so nobody gets sick, hopefully. And we're good to go. All right. A little prayer. Let's hope this is a safe flight. Down to San Jose. Fired up. now at 1800 feet per minute, 2000 feet per minute, let's settle down just slightly, there we go, holding it, hand flying the airplane right now, hand flying the airplane, maintaining runway heading, flaps retracted, a little chop, it's okay, Definitely bouncing around a little bit on that climb out. Okay. Flaps retracted. Oh, I already did that, sorry. Autopilot activated. Little heat warning, that's okay. Alright, so we're making our left turn now to join up to our pre-programmed route. So he's going to turn left like this, and eventually, in a minute, he'll be over here. We'll be over there. Airspeed's good right now, 166. Vertical speed, 1,800 feet per minute, just as uh, expected. Deactivate the inertial separator and landing lights. Let's 
see a little bit of the ground right now, but we are in some pretty heavy rain. Pretty significant precip right now, guys. This will be a quick, quick, the actual time in the air, I think, will be pretty quick. I think we were on the ground 13 minutes. I took, I note our takeoff uh, time at uh, UTC was uh, 1700. 10 o'clock sharp here in Southern California, but... Lots of weather. Winds are uh, pretty significant. 15 knot tailwind, or 4,600 feet. Outside air temperature, 17 degrees, so it's windy, very wet, very wet, and um, but not cold. Which again, I don't claim to be a. Ooh, look at us coming out of these clouds. Oh, that's sweet. Oh my god. I don't claim to be an expert on uh, tropical weather, but it seems like it. Look at that. I was thinking yesterday as I was rewatching my video of my approach into uh, Belize. I'm sorry, into uh, Liberia, Costa Rica, that I'm so focused on the instruments sometimes I fail to appreciate the scenery. So that is in part what motivated my desire to uh, maybe do a rent a little Cessna 152 when we get to uh, San Jose and uh, and check things out. You know, just just fly around and. and if we get cooperative weather, obviously. See, I already knew they were going to say that, so I pre-programmed it in. Climb and maintain 8,000 feet Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. I'm going to increase our throttle, actually. It's so reactive, the throttle. This is weird, just flying at 8,000 feet. I don't do much VFR in this sim. I basically do, and I'm not doing VFR now, actually, for the record. But my point in saying that is that uh, the VFR flying usually takes place at lower altitudes. I just, I'm just blown away. Okay, our airspeed's increasing now, as you would expect, because we're leveling off at our cruising altitude of just 8,000 feet, and we're moving right along. I'm looking at my four flight app, we're hauling ass. Ground speed's 248, 249, and increasing steadily. You can see our airplanes banked very slightly to the right as we have now intercepted. Take a look. We've now intercepted our approach, or rather, our route that I pre-programmed in. We're going that way. Anyway, I was uh, I was thinking as I watched that, re-watched that uh, video of our approach into uh, Liberia yesterday, I would catch little glimpses of things out uh, outside the window. You know, I'd be like zoomed in on the VFD like this and I'd see something out here that I didn't even notice when I was actually flying. Uh, and so I figured, I'm not uh, saying that that's a bad thing. I'm, I'm just saying that it would be nice to notice those things every once in a while. I can certainly understand why I didn't or couldn't because I'm busy. And I, I got to tell you, when you're handling an approach, especially one like yesterday's, you're busy. You are busy. And anybody who's flown, well, obviously those guys who've flown in real life know this, but anybody who knows this sim and who's committed to doing it right, or at least according to what you've learned online and so forth, 
you got your hands full i mean you they talk about driving being a divided attention activity wrong <laughs> this is really a divided attention activity you've got so much going on that you've got to keep track of and unlike driving you just can't stop you can't pull over if you need to gather your thoughts you know you're committed and i, I i'm a epic epic nerd i freely concede that oh you got a little ground look at it beautiful down there i'm an epic nerd i'm the first to concede that but i really take it seriously i mean i i i play this game or this sim in a way that in my mind is symbolic of just generally how to conduct oneself in life. Be serious about things. Learn the rules. Do it right. Now, I've said this before. I'm not trying to preach. Plenty of people have plenty of different ways to enjoy this sim, and God bless you. I like the challenge, though, of learning how to plan a flight, know your route, know what to expect out of your instruments, know how to get there, how to get there safely. I mean, I actually imagine that there is a person with me on this plane, or people, and that they need me to get them there in one piece. And by the rules, I'm just going to swoop in. And, and the wonderful thing about this sim is that with weather like this, it's so unrealistic, and, and, and the clouds, and, and look at this. Look at it. Just, it just leaves my jaw on the floor. I, I guess I'm an old geezer, you know what I mean? Because I grew up with Flight Sim, which was basically, in, the, in 85, 86, Flight Sim was wire art. Okay? I'm just telling you. So when I see this, I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I mean, this beautiful valley, roads, buildings, this, these ridge lines, lightning, clouds, look, just, I don't know, I sound like an old man. Okay, we're uh, closing in, uh, just 15 minutes now, according to fourth flight, probably more like 20, once we start slowing down, but that's okay. Most of my videos that I post are approaches and landings, so, occasionally, I'll do a full flight, especially since I know no one will ever see them. Now, the weather seems a little bit better. There's obviously rain. This is a rain curtain. That's, I think, what it's called meteorologically. A rain curtain. I might actually be interested in seeing if we can spot a rainbow. They do have, they have modeled rainbows in flight sim. Ah, look at that. Sorry, one of my other hobbies, trail running. I see that. Like, I want to run that. Anyway, I do take it seriously, and I enjoy taking it seriously. Having a sim that allows you to incorporate real weather demands of the user an ability to develop the mastery to handle it and to fly in any setting or conditions. So green. Wow. I mean, it's just... It just I've never been to Costa Rica, but this reminds me of Hawaii. I mean, it's... Just, Bright, beautiful, bright sunlight piercing through white puffy clouds. It's amazing. I mean, what, what, what was it? To, I'm looking at my, my uh, timer here. 11 minutes ago, we were on the ground in a storm. And now we're here. Only in this game, and only in aviation, can you experience, can you experience things like that. Hoping to hear from the... Uh, Air traffic control, we'll see if we have the same problems we had yesterday. The difference is, happily, we're not at 29,000 feet, 10 miles from the airport like yesterday, which is always an adventure. While I'm uh, waiting, I will program into the radio the VOR DME frequency for this airport, which, according to my research, is 115. 
point seven and then I'll also go over to minimums put those in here and minimums barrel minimums are thirty eight hundred radio altimeter minimums are seven seventy nine let's use that okay good and then we'll go over here and see if that VOR is correct. I never know what you're going to get off the internet. Back. Uh, if these settings actually bearing one. Yes. What do you know? Showing 42 miles. The VOR appears based on my review of the area to be at the airport. Well, that can be quite helpful. A 13 knot tailwind, 284 knots ground speed because of that tailwind. We'll pre program in our uh, heading bug for the approach course up to 48. Two four eight needs a little chop, we're bouncing around a little bit. Is, is the approach course for the runway, which is 25. The runways are given numbers that correspond to their position on a compass. So they don't name a runway 25 just for the heck of it. They name it that because the direction it faces is 250, which is west southwest. West is 270. Weather's changed a little bit here. Air temperature outside is 14 degrees, but we're dealing with a little bit of chop here. Nothing uh, Three Whiskey Bravo can't handle, though, right? Airport elevation is uh, 3,021 feet, so... Very different from Liberia, where we are 269 feet above sea level. I just have to constantly remind myself how unbelievable these clouds are, the graphics. They, people are so cross on the forums, grouchy and pissed off about everything. I don't know. I, now, admittedly, I'm not having to deal with a lot of technical problems. It's been working mostly well for me. I've definitely had my issues. And I probably shouldn't say anything because now I'm just, like commenting and now it'll cross crash the desktop. <laughs> Good for me. But uh, I don't know. Whoa! Holy Christ! Speaking of crash the desktop, I thought maybe something was happening right there. That was a big old bolt of lightning. Ooh! Sorry to the passenger or passengers. The. Uh, RA minimum, radio altitude minimum, refers to the altitude above ground versus the barometric minimum, which is the altitude above sea level. Climb? Oh boy, here we go with the goofy ATC. I'm glad you're watching this with me. Let's watch what happens. Let's see what happens. I'm being told to climb, which is silly. I checked the uh, approach into this airport. There's no mountain or anything between me and the airport, at least not at this altitude. But if she wants me to climb, I'll climb. Let's see what happens, though. see I mean this is beautiful out down there but anyway I'll do what she tells me I'll climb to 12,000 I suspect that either before I get to 12,000 or when I get to 12,000 she'll then immediately turn around and tell me to descend just shake my head it's a minor inconvenience 
wouldn't do this realistically. I mean, if you're at 8,000 and you're safely at 8,000, why tell someone to climb? But she wants me to climb, I'll climb. I'm just glad she's talking to me. And that's half the battle with this goddamn thing. Is, you know, Told you. Okay, so let's go down to 10,000. Descend and maintain 10,000 feet. Docker train Told you. Uh, it's okay. Just roll with the punches. Showing just uh, eight minutes and 30 seconds from landing. what we're flying right now. Very slow left turn. I'll zoom out a little bit. See? Like that. What a pretty, pretty flight. Look at this. I actually think the weather's been pretty nice. Nine nine zero on the altimeter. Let's adjust that. That says two nine eight nine right now, so we'll just adjust it. Two nine nine zero. Ten thousand feet. Showing just seven minutes from the airport right now. That'll obviously be less than that. Or should be more than seven minutes because we're going to start slowing down right now. But not a lot more than that. Yeah, I was saying, uh, I'll take this, in term, especially on a little short short flight like this, I feel capable of flying complete IMC and not seeing anything and so on and so forth. I enjoy the technical challenge associated with that, but it's kind of, let's be honest, I mean, it's kind of fun to showcase the, the capabilities of this sim. And a day like this, oh, that was sweet. A day like this is kind of perfect. I mean, it's a tropical day in in October in Costa Rica. And, you know, again, having been in the tropics, I've, I've, I've been to the Yucatan Peninsula. I've been to Hawaii many times. And it, it feels like this. Bright blue sky. Puffy white clouds. The tropical winds. And then green, 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 and more green. And that's what uh, that's what it's depicting. There's the Pacific Ocean out there, and it's in all, all its vastness. Good. Clear to <laughs> colon. I think it's colon, but okay. Descend and maintain 8,000 feet. Keep speed below 210 knots. Expect our nat whiskey runway 25 approach via colon transition. Clear to colon down her tree whiskey. Bravo. Colon. <laughs> anyway, the weather looks a little bit rougher in front of us. I'm too scared to activate the ra onboard radar, which I would do if I were in the real aircraft right now, but I don't want to crash the desktop on our short flight down to San Jose, Costa Rica. You see, we've been cleared to Colon. You can actually see Colon coming up here on the MFD. There it is. C O L O N. By the way, can I just mention for the record that she just cleared us down to, or he just cleared us down to 8,000, which is what I was cruising at in the first place? But who knows? They. Move people around up here based on weather, based on traffic. I've got real weather or real traffic activated, as I think I've mentioned now several times. But I'm not seeing anything else on radar in our vicinity. That might be just as much a function of COVID as any error in the sim. 
because there was plenty of traffic around around uh, in my approach to New Orleans the other day. Lots of airplanes. I suppose it's not entirely implausible that there aren't a lot of tourists flying to San Jose, Costa Rica right now. Still have graphic settings in Ultra. Uh, that's cool. And I don't know, from my perspective, I'm more than satisfied. The VOR is reading 5.5 miles to the airport, but remember, we're going to pass the airport and then turn around. So this is blue arrow is going to go like this until eventually we turn around and then it comes back. Little tailwind right now, seven knots, that's fine. That means when we turn around to head west, we'll be heading right into it. We're at 8,000 now, just as instructed. We might get a further descent instruction here momentarily. Told you. 7,300 feet. 7,300 feet with cruise, probably. Descend and maintain 7,300 feet of Dr. Trey Whiskey Bravo. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Obviously, the capital of Costa Rica, a major city, and we're seeing it. Looks nice down there. I always wanted to go to Costa Rica. I heard it's very nice. A couple friends who've been there. Oh, look, building complex. I can't zoom in anymore, but you see. Yeah, they're not dangerously close, but... Oh, look at the windmills! Awesome. Down to 6,400 here through his Bravo. Descend and maintain 6,400 feet on her tree whiskey Bravo. Ugh, boy. My poor passengers. Yeah, anyway, setting's still at Ultra and... Down to 5,500 here through his Bravo. Descend and maintain 5,500 feet Docker Tray Whiskey Bravo. Alright, we're going to turn on our initial separator. Slow us down even more. You can see where we are relative to the airport. Then we're going to make a big U-turn, left U-turn. Hopefully we have uh, glide path information on the RNAV 25 approach. That would make my life a little less complicated. Descend and maintain 4,700 feet. Under 4,700, dear Fruzi Bravo. Descend and maintain 4,700 feet, Docker Tree Whiskey Bravo. I can't recall ever getting such specific descent instructions from ATC. Is it me or is it just actually working today? Look at that. <laughs> you know what, friends? If your jaw's not on the floor, that somebody could develop a product like this. You're just a malcontent. I'm sorry. Stop with your bitching. Shallow out our descent rate a little bit. As usual in the TBM, I'm trying to slow down. We're headed basically on what's a base leg right now. If you look at us, we're going this way, and then we're going to go that way. But everything looks good. Down to 3,800 degrees through the problem. That's basically the Descend final approach fix. This is going very smoothly. Landing gear down now. Dr. Tree Whiskey Bravo, you are 5 miles east of Coco. Contact Coco Tower on 118.6 when inbound on the approach. Still making us keep turning left. We might actually on be able to see the runway today. Dr. Tree Whiskey Bravo. How nice. We might have. <laughs> Five at three, that's perfect. Tree, whiskey, Bravo, clear to land runway two five. Wind two six five at three. So not too windy, there's the runway in front of us. Clear to 
Uh oh. Shit. We're too high. We're too high. All right, hold on. I'm gonna um, sink our heading bug. Damn it. Turn off nav. Switch to heading. We're gonna. They didn't bring us down low enough, gang. That's my fault. I should have known that. All right. It's okay. Things like this happen. We're gonna basically just fly it again. Very short. Basically reapproach. Yeah, they they fucked this up. They they should have descended us more than they did. It's all right. It's okay. It's not gonna be a problem. We got good weather. I just need to descend more. Let's uh, reduce our altitude. No, we don't want to be too low because this airport's at 3,200 feet, so we'll leave it at 3,500 feet. Leave a descent rate of 500 feet per minute. Basically just flying a quick little corkscrew circle here to line ourselves up again. All right, this is a sim. You got. I, I got to keep telling myself that. You know, I've never flown to this airport before. I've never flown into this area before. So you don't want to throw some fit that you know it's not doing what it. I mean, the the fact is, is the ATC did not order me to descend low enough, which is ironic given how they usually are. So right now we're headed due east, which is exactly... Actually, I'm sorry, we should be at 070, not 090. 070 is the exact opposite direction of the runway. So by descending... I'm going to take over the airport airplane now and just handle this approach myself. This is kind of fun. It's been a while since I've actually flown an approach by hand. Gear is down. Put those landing lights on. Laps. And this time when we approach we're not going to be quite so high. Again, you, I, I, I you know, when I, 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 they turned us final, and I looked down, and I saw where the, I, if you rewatch it, you'll see, I saw exactly where the runway was. Could I have just plunged the nose towards the ground and landed? Yes. Okay. Yes, I could have. But I don't. That's not how I do it. I, I it's that wouldn't have been realistic. It wouldn't have been safe. Final flaps. That wouldn't have been realistic, it wouldn't have been safe, and I'm just, I'm not doing it. I refuse. That means reshooting the approach, then so be it. Airspeed's 90. Now there's the runway, and you can see we are considerably better positioned to handle the approach and landing than we were before. It does raise the question of what would happen if this type of a situation presented itself in conditions that were really poor. And the conditions are not poor today, actually. Actually, excellent. Airspeed's good. I'm looking for bossies or poppies. I'm not seeing them. Bossy vertical approach slope indicator. Poppy precision approach path indicator. Either way. It's got an offset threshold. Pop up the seat a little bit. So we do not land on the red part with the arrows. It's okay. I'm glad this happened. I'm actually glad this happened. Airspeed's good. Runway 25 confirmed. Idle. Reverse thrusters. Okay. Finish.
finish our rollout here. Exit right, I think. Yeah, exit right. Okay, so a little hiccup, a little hiccup uh, on that one. But I'm, I'm glad because you know what? I'm not, I'm not here to sugarcoat stuff. And uh, you know, you got to see what I saw as it happened in real time. And that's cool. I'm at, I have no regrets. It's okay. You got to see what 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 do you do when something like this happens, right? ATC vectors you in. Okay, clear to land, and then you look in front of you, and there's a runway that's you're too high to land at. So can I sit there and throw a fit or panic or restart the mission or whatever? Yeah, I could do all that, but I can also ask myself, how am I going to calmly deal with the situation? Which I did. Alright, let's contact ground. 121.9er. Hello. Taxi to... Never contacted them. Okay. Maybe I have to tune to that and then taxi to parking. Ground Doppler November 343 Whiskey Bravo request taxi to parking. Okay. Turn off that. Pedo heat. Don't need that anymore. Probably didn't need it at all, but. Okay, use those feet. Anyway, as I was saying, the situation was what it was. It, uh, we were brought in too high, so effectively did a, a missed approach. Not exactly published, but. Uh, What's, what do I consider my overarching goal? The ongoing safety and success of Three Whiskey Bravo. And uh, we achieved that today with a nice successful landing, if nothing else. The approach was a little botched, but that's happened before on, on this and many, many other flights on Three Whiskey Bravo, and it is what it is question isn't whether it'll happen. The question is what to do when it does happen. I'm thinking that uh, I was thinking about going and checking out this volcano. I can't remember what it's called. Irasu or something like that. But uh, obviously not in this weather. I may have to go with some default weather settings <laughs> just to check it out. Okay, where's Gary? I think I see him. Yeah, I see him. Still using these feet. Airport's a little lumpy. All right. Come on. I see him. I see you, pal. What do we do? Go up on a speed bump or something? Let's go. There he is. I use this little airplane symbol and align it with the... That's a good way to... Come on. There you go. Fuel cut off. Anyway, I, I like, I enjoy the way this game plays. I, it, it's always throwing curveballs at you because of AI problems. <laughs> but I don't mind. It's interesting. What to do when it happens. I think it's a lot like life in that way. You can go ahead and pretend and hope that everything's perfect, but you know what? It almost never is. So rather than sit there and cry about it, what are you going to do, not if, but when there's an unexpected development? I mean, what are you going to do? You want to put your head in the sand and pretend it's not going to happen? Fine, knock yourself out. 
I know a lot of people like that live that way. That's the, I'd prefer to know that everything's going to go to shit or not be what you expect and yet still be able to work with it. Deal with it. Roll with the punches. Fight. 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 To the end. And uh, hey, I mean my plane could crash. My beloved three whiskey Bravo could crash tomorrow. But I've now flown all over the place in this baby. And I've been successful. And I, and I have been flying uneasy. I've been flying in clear skies. I've been flying real weather into airports that are new to me. But it's not like I'm all reckless either. You know what I mean? I research it. And I don't want this plane to crash. And I enjoy it tremendously. That's it for now. Let's go outside and just check to make sure everything's good. Everything looks great. We're parked. Almost made the line there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Looks like we got some rain headed our way, this rain curtain. Yeah, I might have to uh, do some uh, default clear skies or light clouds or something to go check out some nearby scenery. All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>